What's up guys? Welcome to another one of our Rad Power Bikes e-bike video. And this one is going to be a fun one. We've now had these bikes for over 500 miles and Rad Power Bikes sent these to us about six months ago for us to give our honest review and opinion on these things. Can you believe it's been over six months since we've had these things? No, it honestly feels like we've had them forever. It's like, changed our lives. It's changed our lives and that is not, that is, we're not just throwing that out there lightly. We're being real and honest when we say that. I can't imagine us not having these bikes now and I say that like I want to have this bike for the rest of my life. So this video is going to be our six month 500 mile review. We are going to give the five things we absolutely love about these bikes a few things that we would change about these bikes and we're going to go over some updates on the accessories we've had for this many miles uh, including our bike rack our bike cover our bike locks our bike bags and helmets. helmets yeah all that good stuff and we're going to talk a little bit about the maintenance we've had to do this whole time now we've done a few videos on these bikes before we have our basic intro kind of video on what we think about it we have kind of a three month update, how we uh, lock them, how we put them on our bikes, how we store them, all that good stuff. And we've done a bunch of videos where we're just traveling around the country and having the times of our lives on these things. Yeah. So we'll link all those video videos down below and you can check those out if you wanna see those. Like I said, this one is gonna be our six month update and 500 mile review. Our number one favorite thing about these bikes is that they are multi-use, they are multifunctional. So you can use them for fun you can use them for utilitarian and you can use them for exercise. So when you're using them for like fun, I mean, we use these to explore cities. That's our main point that we use them for. For sure. We love to use them for sightseeing. Um, we do love walking, but walking around a big city all day can be taxing. So these bikes, you can literally take them out all day long. We took them out in San Francisco for 50 miles all around the city. And you really get to see the most of a city on bike and then also for sightseeing we like to just canvas new areas whether it's at an rv park or like boondocking you get out there you can just see what's around within a nice five to ten mile radius and really get to get into some nooks and crannies that you can't with a car or your feet and many of you guys know that we were in a sprinter van and this was our only extra mode of transportation besides our sprinter rv so as soon as we got these things, it completely changed. Instead of just a, you know, a mile radius that we would kind of walk to, this opened it up to a multi five to 10 mile type of radius, which covers a lot of different things in different areas. So it really did change the way we RV. Yes, we take them out on date nights a lot, which is another way you can use them just for fun. Go out, go on a date, go to a restaurant, grab a beer, get some ice cream, whatever it is that gets you ticking you can take it out and have fun with it yeah now the second way that we use this as I said is utilitarian so this is more for commuting to your job or me I really like to take these bikes to the grocery store since we didn't have a second vehicle and and we were at a place where there was a grocery store within five miles it was really easy for me to hop on load up groceries I could get a whole week of groceries just on the bike yeah the both of us with both of our pannier bags down and a couple of stuff sacks on our back completely do a, a full load of grocery shopping including bubbly water <laughs> so on commuting if we lived in the city I think we wouldn't even maybe have a car and just a set of e-bikes would be great our last uh, city in Minneapolis that we lived in we walked and biked all over that city when we parked our cars on Friday night we never drove them if we didn't have to. All we did was walk and bike. And so these things just, I would have biked to work because I only worked about three miles away. Yeah, you were definitely close enough to do that. So I could completely see people just getting these things uh, for just commuting to work and not driving the car so much. How awesome would that be to have total auto freedom? It'd be great. No car insurance, no maintenance, just your bikes. They never let you down. Primo. Yep. So the last thing is the exercise portion of it, which is honestly not what we use them for. I know we are a fitness channel and business, but, our eating channel. But yeah, we have our own methods for working out and getting our cardio in. The bikes for us 
you could certainly use it for exercise, especially because the pedal assist is variable. So you can make it as easy or as difficult as you want it to be. And yep. then if you take that and you line it up with some inclines, you can really, really get a good workout in. And you can match it to your level. So you can match it to your abilities, your fitness level, your age, however your joints are. There's no shame in you know getting some assistance from the bike there, and you should, because that's a great way to just do the fitness at your own level and be safe with it. Yeah, instead of just biking a mile or so, if that's all you can kind of do, an assisted bike like this can really, really extend your range and it still gets you moving and out in the fresh air and you are getting exercise. Some people like to think that e-bikes, oh, there's no exercise involved in those things. These have fat tires. They have a seven speed Shimano gear shifter. You can use it just like a regular fat tire bike. Yeah. And it's no big deal. The power assist is up to you. And that's the fun thing about it. You get to choose how much of that electricity you want to use. Yeah, and that holds true for anything in fitness and working out. I mean, it is however challenging you push it to be and the bikes certainly fall into that category. Speaking of fat tires, that is our next point that we love about these bikes. We love the fat tires and the full frame. These bikes are the real deal. You do not feel like you're too big for it or too small for it with the step through frame. And we love the ability to go on every single terrain and not worry about it. As full-time RVers, we are all over the place in all types of different terrains. Yeah, so we've had these bikes thousands of miles. We started up in the Pacific Northwest. The Oregon beaches was amazing. It really just kicked off our ownership of these bikes. Fell in love with them there, driving through the sand. You know, they definitely do well on hard packed sand. If you're taking them through soft pack, you have to get up off and walk a little bit. Um, but hard pack, they travel like a dream on the beaches. And then we did go down the West Coast, like through the vineyards in California. We went, you know, in the deserts in Southwest in Arizona, through Texas. And here we are in Florida where it's a little more tropical, but you can tell like all those places that we've gone definitely have some different terrain. Rocky, mm -hmm. flat, pavement, sand, grass, Everything. sticks, yeah, you name it, we've been through it. And the full frame, like Aaron said, we're super happy that we went with the full size frames. Aaron is 6'2", he has the full bar frame. I am 5'7", I have the step through, and I would absolutely 100% get the step through for me. Again, I love it. I'm not a very graceful person, I'm a little bit clumsy, I'm a little bit <laughs> awkward, so it's really easy to step into but you still have that big size that I love. And the weight is, it's good to be 70 pound bike. It's a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you look at it, but we really like having that sturdy structure. Absolutely, and I would say the roughest terrain that we were through was in quartzite on like ATV side-by-side -side type of trails. It was rocky. It was rocky. It was dusty, it was bumpy. Actually, it was not enjoyable at all. Yeah. It was not one of those fun leisurely rides. But these bikes with the front suspension, the full frame and the fat tires, they took that trail and we rode all the way to town a couple miles on that. Mm -hmm. And it was great. We ended up taking the road all the way back. And that's what we're talking about. It's great that these things can go on the dirt road through all types of sand, rock, yeah. and then they can go right on pavement at the same time. And speaking of the quartzite terrain being very bumpy and rocky, that is the one and only time that my wrist experienced a little bit of pain. A lot of people ask if I experience wrist pain with these bikes mm. because wrists is one area that is a concern with riding bikes. And honestly, I never, ever, ever feel anything on my wrists except while we were in quartzite and you're like just straight jiggling over the rocks. Yeah. So unless you plan on being in a rocky area, you really, I mean, everybody's different of course, but for me personally, I didn't experience any wrist pain except for there. No, and I've never had any discomfort besides my bum when I'm riding on these things for like, you Long know, days. an hour or two. It really does start to, start to uh, feel it there. So people have changed out to bigger, more padded seats. We do have some different style kind of memory foam feet seats on here, but I think no matter what, uh, you're gonna feel it a little bit. The third thing that is our favorite about these bikes is the ease of use and the simplicity of the functions. So straight into this, you can, you can talk to a stranger and give them a two minute explanation on how to get on and how to get riding. 
With this, it has the seven gear shifter. This is your manual shifter. Uh, this is your gear down. This is your gear up. You have your throttle right here that you can easily maneuver without moving your hand. Your brakes. This is how you power on. This is your pedal assist going up and going down. You can turn your lights on right from here. You get a little icon and you get a safety bell. But what we really like when we talk about the simplicity is the screen. You get your speed, you can max up at 20 miles per hour, which is really fun to get on the road. Your mileage, there is a tripometer on here as well, I believe. And down here is your pedal assist. So it can show zero, this is where you have zero assist, all the way up to five, which is your high speed mode. And then your battery. So you get your battery bars, you get five bars to show what your battery level is and your watts to show how much you are taxing on your battery while you're using it. So like I said, it's just great. You can get on, you can get moving, you can glance down really quickly and see your like high level ranks of what everything is and it's super simple to use. So if you want to uh, conserve your battery, if you're on pedal assist five, it's gonna pump all the way the full 750 watts from the electric motor. But once you go down, then the wattage goes all the way down, I think to around like 100, 150 type of watts. And that's how you really extend your range on this thing. Chris briefly mentioned the weight on these before, and that brings up our next point is the durability on these things. And we find the weight to be a bonus in that category. They're mostly all metal frames. There's very little plastic on these besides the fenders and some of the small accessories, but full metal frames, nice leather grips, and they're heavy duty. They're and, high quality. When you ride on it, you feel like it's sturdy. It's quality. Yes, and we've kind of found that out the hard way. We have <laughs> both taken a spill on these things. Both I took of us. the first one. I took the first one. And I remember I was just riding. I don't know what happened, but I literally just fell down like a tumber log. Yeah. And that's where you have to get used to that, the 70 pound frame. And that's where the step through, I think, helps for a lot of people because your feet can firmly be planted on the ground. But if you do kind of spin your wheel and plant it, that's where your momentum can kind of take you over it. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened to me too. I was going over a ditch onto a road and the ditch was all sand, the road was uh, pavement, and I turned my wheel too quick as I got into the sand over the hump to get onto the road, and as soon as I flipped my wheel, I basically endoed over the steering wheel. Yeah. And that's just, uh, you know, kind of user fault and error on that. I was just turning too quickly, and that's, you gotta, gotta be careful in the soft sand. Yeah. But both of these bikes uh, show very little type of you know wear and tear after you know taking a spill like that and so durability has been great for us these have traveled thousands of miles across the country both have about 500 miles on them and they've definitely held up to that task i will say there's been maybe one or two instances where the power has cut out and i believe that was just like a loose power mm -hmm. cord to the battery on the back um, it's not like a reoccurring problem, but you do have to make sure that you uh, adjust all your connections and as much like vibrating and you know driving as these things do, um, those can rattle loose a little bit. So that's something to keep in mind. Yeah. There are a few spots of bare metal like the rotor and down by the brake pedals where it's starting to show a little bit of rust. Now we have had these, as we said, on the coast quite a bit and that's some salty corrosive type of material I did uh, spray them off as much as I could and try to keep them clean but that kind of surface salt uh, and surface rust will will show a little bit so that's something you need to be careful the chains have been 100% great we have seen other people's bikes that the chains were completely rusted so I do use uh, a product that um, just kind of cleans and protects them at the same time nice kind of easy cheating type of product and uh, it's worked pretty well. The chains have been great and just that little bit of minor surface rust. Our fifth and final highlight of what we love about these bikes is the cool factor. They're simply put just cool to have. They're gnarly, they're fun, they get attention. People come talk to us all the time. Every time we're on the bikes, people ask us about them. I can't go to the grocery store without 
<laughs> people are like, hey, what is that? What is it? How much does that cost? And I'm sure it has a lot to do with like, as soon as you get on it, you just start smiling and you feel like a kid again, riding the bike for the first time. And I think people see that, that you just look like you're having the time of your life. Yeah. And then they see this big, gnarly, black, fat, tired, cool looking rad rover, rad power bike. And they are just like, where is that thing from? Where did you get it? And yeah. It's just a great conversation piece and people just, uh, they love talking about it. Yeah, so of all the reasons that we listed that we use these bikes, no matter what we're using it for, every time we hop on it, I get a permagrin from ear to ear. All right, now that we've had these things for six months, here are just a few of our thoughts on things that could be changed to make these great bikes even better. And Chris mentioned that the display is nice and simple and easy to use. And that totally makes sense. It's understandable so that people can just get on this thing. It has all the information you need to get up and go. Now for the people that are a little more techie, I would like to see an option for an advanced screen that has all types of customizable options on it. And since these bikes are powered by lithium ion batteries, there's all types of cool tech that would be just kind of fun to be built in like GPS, maybe camera system, maybe built in locks. Uh, all types of like fun little features that would be nice to see. Almost like a little bit of a smartphone type of screen where you could do all types of customizable things with it. It would be really cool if you could connect your phone and your bike via Bluetooth or even Wi-Fi if you wanted to get that crazy. But Bluetooth would be pretty cool that you could look at it, you could see if it was locked, you could honk the horn, <laughs> you could activate the GPS, basically you could be in constant communication with your bike because these are a serious investment and it would just be kind of sweet to see that type of extra tech involved in these things. Yeah. Of, of course, that would completely change the price point on these. These are a great mid-priced high feature bike and that's why I think they're one of the most popular e-bikes out there. There's good reason for that. Once you start adding on a whole bunch of other stuff, you're gonna, of course, up the price on it. So when we say it would be nice to have an extra set of eyes on it, we're talking about like when you go to a restaurant and you park for an hour or two or whatever, that way you don't always have to feel like you're visually in line of sight with your bike. Even if you do lock it up really, really well, you still kind of have that feeling like you want to keep an eye on it, especially when you're in a big city where there's lots of people going around and bike theft is a yeah. real thing. Yeah, give it a little chirp if somebody's looking at it a little too closely. Somebody's <laughs> peeping it. Step away. Yeah, step away from the bike, please. <laughs> Keep on moving. The next thing I would love to see an option on is an extended range battery. Now we've done almost 50 miles on a single charge on this. So it's not like we're talking about anything uh, that has to be done to something like this. I'm talking about an extended optional kind of upgradable feature that can really pump this range out maybe close to 80 miles or something around that because 50 miles sounds like a lot and it really truly is but the way we like to explore we love to get out to a big city and just roam around all day so we'd love to see like an 80 to 100 mile type of extended battery on these bad boys yeah and when we do hit that 50 in big cities that's not just throttling on five the whole time what we usually do is we will zip in on a three if we need an extra boost we'll bump it higher than that but we typically like to commute into cities on a three and then once we're in the city we knock it down to a one and even a zero if it's nice and flat that way when we're just lollygagging around we can extend out that mileage by putting in some manual footwork and getting a little bit of exercise in. And then when it's time to hit the road, we know we have a little juice left to get home with some assist again. Yeah, so full throttle, you could expect to see around 20 to 25 miles of just full throttle. So when we're using these bikes at a campsite, let's say, and we're going to the gym that's five miles away, one way each way, and we have full chargeability at the campsite, we throttle full there and full back because we're using them as commuter, commuter. commuter bikes, basically. So we don't have to take an Uber or walk or run or anything like that. Um, so you could expect to see that type of mileage. Now, Chris mentioned we use three a lot. Three is a great speed. It does about 15 to 17 miles per hour, uh, but that's gonna really extend your range to 30 to 40 miles. And then when you really wanna get it closer to 50, that's where you gotta throttle down between zero and three, kind of uh, find that Mix happy balance. Yeah, and of course, weight, hills, terrain, 
all that stuff is going to come into play when you're talking about range. And if I were able to wave a magic wand and just have the wildest dream, it would be that you could do a supercharge option on these batteries. Right now there is a charge time. It varies, probably five hours. Yeah, up to I think six to almost seven on a fully dead battery. So in my in this wish list, I would be able to plug in the battery and have it supercharged from dead to full within 60 minutes. So what does that mean? You can ride it all morning. You can take a break at a coffee shop or at a restaurant, get some food, get some water in you, and you can charge it while you're patroning a restaurant. And then that way you get a full battery and you're back out on the road, good to go. Yeah, a lot of devices have this quick charge where it goes up to 80% very fastly and then it slow charges from 80% to 100%. Now keep in mind the faster you charge a battery, the more uh, it damages a battery as far as the longevity of the life. So that is why to get the most life cycles out of a battery, you do want to slow trickle charge it like these are designed to do. So this is gonna give you the longest amount of cycles so that you're not replacing these batteries, which are very expensive. So completely understand why it's not there, but would love to see that quick charge option. So what have we had to do for maintenance in six months, 500 miles on these bikes? Not really a whole lot. Like I said, I keep the chain clean and lubricated with a two-in-one spray. Um, I have had to adjust the derailleurs once or twice as they got out of adjustment, which I just found a video on YouTube on how to do that. It was pretty simple. The tires seem to have a lot of good tread left on them. I think they're starting to get a little louder. If you've ever had all-terrain tires on a vehicle uh, or on a bike like this, usually the more they wear down, the louder they end up getting. Um, so I would imagine that these tires are gonna last, I don't know, 700 to maybe a thousand miles. I mean, we use them on a lot of pavement and they have really good life left in them. Yeah. Uh, the brakes, are starting to get a little uh, loose, if that's the right word, where they're squeezing down a little bit farther. So I'm gonna have to just adjust those quickly so that we can uh, maybe tighten those brakes up a little bit. But other than that, there has been very, very little maintenance on these. I know a lot of people are, are wondering, like, where do I get my e-bike worked on? Years and years ago, when these things first came out, most bike um, repair shops maybe didn't wanna touch them because they weren't familiar with them. But I think nowadays they are a lot more common, especially in the last couple of years. So there is plenty of places that you can take it. And Rad Power Bikes uh, website also has a spot where they have um, authorized repair dealers and some of them are even mobile dealers. So I think it's very simple to get these things worked on if you had to. And you did put that green gel in the tires too. That was one thing you did for the tires just yes. to prevent if you do run over a pine needle or a thumbtack or whatever it is that might make you go dead. Good point. Yeah, we did talk about flats in our last videos. I kind of forgot about that, but we did get, I got two flats. Chris has never had a flat. Um, so I repaired both flats and I used the green slime in both of the tires and we have not had flat since. And that was in California, across the country. I don't even know how many hundred miles ago. And we haven't had to pump up the tires. No. Yeah. So that, the tires have held their air really well. Absolutely. So that is a good point. Okay, let's give an update on our accessories and how they've been holding out. First off, let's start with this Rad Power Bikes uh, rack that's on here. We mounted this thing on, hasn't had to have any adjustments. I actually like having this on here. It gives you another grip to like, as I'm mounting, as I'm moving. I really like that and it just feels like a nice sturdy accessory. And of course you need that if you're gonna mount on some type of bag. And this is gonna be our favorite accessory because it turns these bikes um, not into just the fun we like to do, but also like grocery shopping, Chris said, and even just carrying camera gear, an extra shirt, bags, waters, all types of stuff. And we opted for these um, Paneer style MTS bags. And they have these built-in paneers that mount down below. And while they're not the largest, they really do help. And that way you don't have to have giant pannier bags all the time on there. And so it's been great. Now, one thing I will note is because we have these things in full-time use out in the sun quite a bit, I noticed that they're no longer a nice dark black like this seat or like the zipper. They're almost like a lighter kind of faded material. So that's one thing is they did sun fade a little bit. A lot um, of it. A lot, well, a lot of it. 
can't I can't pull one past you, Chris. <laughs> that, no, it's true. They are really um, different color than they were. I'll show some uh, footage from when we originally put them on, but it doesn't affect the usage of them at all. It's just more of the looks. Okay, moving forward, we did upgrade the seats like I mentioned. Um, they do help a little bit. The seats that come with the Rad uh, Rovers here are actually really nice seats, and I don't know that they're that much different. I think it helps a little bit, but I know when we first put them on, it wasn't like this crazy difference. So just a little bit of extra padding for the bum. Next up here is our Abus folding locks, and these get a lot of attention and you really need to have some type of secure metal style lock. Now, no lock is impenetrable, but at least this would be very difficult to cut through. You would need power tools, and we absolutely love having these on the bikes at all times. The holder has been great. We've never had problems with them falling off or anything like that. Uh, there is a little bit of a learning curve to these styles of locks because they are kind of, although they, they move, but they're still kind of rigid. So because you got to get down to the triangle, um, you could see if you needed a, to hit a pole this way, they don't twist and move that way. So you kind of have to hit a vertical type of pole like this, as opposed to a pole sitting that way, if that makes sense. Yeah. My favorite thing about those locks is the way that they get nice and tidy when they store. Yeah. As opposed to our old bicycles back home, before we hit the road, they were those fold up coils. They were always falling apart while I was riding. Oh, we had a U-lock with a coil on it. And those drove me nuts. Yeah, so they kind of hung off the clean, side. I love how clean these are. Very nice. Now, talking about locks, we carry this secondary lock. Now, this came with our bike rack. This is a cable lock. This should not be your only form of locking your bike. This can get cut very simple with a simple type of wire cutter. Um, you do not want to use this as your only lock. Why do we have it then? Because it has its place. So if we're just running into the grocery store for 10 minutes or to a restaurant and we're locking these up out right up front in a busy area, you don't need to go Fort Knox on these things. Somebody's not going to just look at your bike and run and, and steal it unless you're in a bad neighborhood, which is totally possible. <laughs> but this is um, just great to just lock it up. This keeps honest people honest, as people like to say. And it's a nice option and it's easier. When I was talking about um, how those other locks can be a little difficult, this you can just string through both of them around whatever you want, snap it together and it works great. So we kind of always carry both of these with us because these uh, other locks can be difficult. Somewhat and limiting. They, yeah, they can be. Also, you can use these in combination. So sometimes if I can't get these around a pole, I'll lock both of our bikes together and then this lock around a pole and it works great that way. Now, because my Rad Rover has the standard uh, bar mount here, mine is mounted a little different than Chris's is. Hers is mounted through the bottle holder. This one's held on by straps, um, which also gave me the ability to use this uh, extra little bag here, which I love this, because not only can you put your phone in here for GPS, but you can also put like easy, quick things like keys, and I have uh, my tire, my tire patch repair kit so I can patch up a tire if I need to, but it's nice just having a quick, easy option right in front of you. Last is our helmets here on the bikes, and these are a burn kind of, we think they're a cool style, nice, holy, airy. These are for summertime. Um, they have a nice removable type of um, headliner in there with a flip down sun visor. And we absolutely love these helmets. The only thing we wish they had was Bluetooth, like some of the other new helmets are starting to have. And that would be a great option to stay in communication. Okay, I wanna bring up this bike rack because so many people are having trouble finding an actual bike rack that's heavy duty enough to handle e-bikes. And so this Hollywood e-bikes rack is capable of 80 pounds per tray. And so that well fits the parameters of a heavy e-bike like these that are 70 plus pounds. And so this thing has held up great. It's probably maybe done four or 5,000 miles across the country. I'm not sure we got it all the way up in Washington and it came all the way down the coast, down into Texas, all the way into Florida here. And we used to have this on our Sprinter van 
now we have it on our rooftop tent Ford Super Duty Tremor and it's continuing to hold up great. This thing's very heavy duty and it's showing very little signs of wear and tear. So <laughs> the bar in the middle is held in by a pin like this. Um, I actually usually leave this up all the time because we have these aftermarket tail lights on and I also relocated uh, the license plate light just because when you have the bikes on here it pretty much covers up anything you're going to have here. Since we use this full time uh, it makes sense for us to do that. Normally you could pull the pin, uh, it kind of bends our light, but you can drop that all the way down so that you could load your bike um, on the back and then put the bar up, load it to the front. If you saw me in the second video, um, I put the bikes on kind of in the back this away, and then the front uh, bike I put up one tire at a time. So you can drop this down and put your tires up one at a time. Uh, but for us, it just worked to, to load it up that way. And then the last thing we want to show you is this Pro Bike Tool cover. This is our second cover as we had a little bit of an issue with our first one where the threads came out of this strap. But again, this has thousands of miles on it, holds up great, it's waterproof, it's reflective on there. This little st strap is reflective as well. And so this has been sitting out in the sun full time for, um, I want to say four months now, and it's been holding up great. Anytime you do full time usage on this stuff, it, it can really affect the uh, lifespan of it. So um, we do recommend this cover. It seems to hold tight. It's not loose and flaps, flaps around. Um, it's got a lot of uh, connecting points. And we kind of go over this cover a bit more in our second video on the e-bikes, but it's been great. It's holding up well and it was inexpensive. So I think that's going to do it for this video. Once again, we will have links to everything down below if you're interested in checking out the stuff. Thank you again to Rad Power Bikes for sending us these awesome bikes and changing our full-time RVing life. And I think that's going to do it. Yes. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.